Okay, is it recording? Yeah. Yep, yay. Right, yay. so what I've got here is five related, um, five related things in physics, but they are slightly different and they're causing confusion and I'm not surprised. Okay, this first one, in baby language when we're talking back in year 9 and 10, we'd refer to as being a push or a pull. That's a simplistic view of it. Newton, back in the 1600s, actually did a lot of work on these things and famously, supposedly started off by um, observing or having an apple hit his head, which almost certainly didn't happen. Um, in fact, probably what did happen was he's probably on his balcony one day having afternoon tea at the university and he saw an apple fall and it sparked his imagination to start thinking about what was going on there. And classically, gravity had been a problem that had really perplexed um, people for a long, long time. So he developed back in the 1600s three laws which described force and how it works quite well. And that famously is the second one where he said force equals mass times acceleration, which um, I had that famous song for. The thing about that is that equation there defines for us what force is to start with. A force is something which causes an acceleration in a mass. Okay? Um, force is measured in newtons in celebration of the fellow who actually invented it. Now, to understand what that means, when you see an object accelerating, it means you've got an unbalanced force on it. Now, that's not to say there's no forces around. Yep. So are you able to push me and tell me how many versions of force you use? If I have an appropriate device to do it, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, I have to be a little bit careful here because there's lots of fuzziness around it <coughs> that real world situations bring into it. But at the moment, I have a pen sitting on the table, right? But I know there's a force acting on it, don't I? Gravity. How could I prove, how could I prove there's a force acting on it? Well, imagine, if you will, I'm, I was walking across the floor here. There's still a force acting on me downwards due to gravity. A, but a what happens if I, if I walk and there's suddenly a trap door, which is spring-laden, I step on it and it just opens up? I, I start to accelerate, don't I? I go from zero vertical motion, I start to have a velocity downwards, so I'm accelerated. So I know there's a force acting on the pen. And as you say, it's balanced. There's an equal force pushing upwards against the, the pen from the table as there is a force pushing down or against the table from the pen being accelerated by gravity. If I just let go of it above the table, you can see it's accelerated. There's a force acting on it. So what we say in physics now is not that force is a push or a pull, but a force is something which causes an acceleration. Okay? Now, with that, Brad, what is an acceleration? Come on, you know what it is. Oh, an acceleration. Um, an acceleration is? Uh, velocity over time. Yeah, a oh, change velocity in velocity over time. So what we say is that if you've got a change in velocity, you have a force acting which causes the acceleration, right? And it's an unbalanced force. So any time you see an unbalanced force acting, you're getting an acceleration, which we see as a change in velocity. Now, that means if I've got this and I'm pushing it along constant speed, is there an acceleration? No. It's go it has constant velocity. If it's going at constant velocity, no acceleration, no force. Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's a force, though. Right. Because this is where it gets a bit confusing. If this was, um, say I put you on... So I put you, Jack, on um, ice skates on ice and I just gave you a shove. Yeah. I'd accelerate you from zero, say, to 15 kilometres an hour. Yeah. And once you're off my hand, are you still being accelerated? No. No. That, that's a different thing because you're not doing this. You're doing this. And so there's a constant force of that hand. Right. But what I'm getting to here is, and what you'll see on the video you've got to watch later at home, is that... Once you're up to a certain speed, if there's no friction, I wouldn't have to push against you anymore. You just keep going. Yeah, because the non-dependence of the space stays, stays in motion. Because so yeah. Like there was the original force that acted on it to make it get moved. So you accelerated initially, get to a constant speed. Yeah. So just, and, now you're going constant and now that will just keep riding constant speed. If there's no friction, it keep going forever. Now, I have to be. This is the problem with real-world stuff. 
Um, when you get into higher physics, you start talking about conservative, non-conservative work and other stuff. Because I've got friction acting against the motion, I have to keep applying a force to keep it going. But for you guys, if there's no acceleration, right? There's no force acting. That's how we'll deal with it at the moment. So, so now. So if it's accelerating, there's an unbalanced force, and we see it's going to change the force. To yeah, exactly. Now, the important part with this, and I'm just going to pause. It's going. Okay. So, here's something you need to realise. If I have an acceleration of 10 metres per second per second, now remember that means a change of 10 metres per second in velocity for every second you're accelerating. So in the first second, from 0 to 1 second, you'll reach a speed of 10 metres per second. In the second second, you'll gain another 10 metres per second so you'll be going at 20 metres per second. At the end of three seconds, you'll gain another 10 metres per second. You'll be going at 30 metres per second, right? And so on. That is a constant acceleration, isn't it? Yep. Now, if I apply a force of 10 newtons, it's about what it takes to um, carry your average apple. Oh, no, sorry. It'd be a box of apples. Like One apple is about a newton. So 10 newton force on a one kilogram object will give you will give you an acceleration of a. So a will equal 10 divided by one, which will equal 10 meters per second per second. Right. So if I apply 10 newton force. If I apply one newton force, that's a ten newton force to a one kilogram object, it will accelerate constantly with that acceleration, and so it will change its speed every second by ten meters per second, right? Uh, times acceleration. So let's make it clear. If I apply a constant force of ten newtons to a one kilogram object. I get a constant acceleration of 10 metres per second per second, which means if it was starting at zero speed, after the first second, it'll be at 10 metres per second. After the second second, it'll be 20 metres per second. After the third second, it'll be 30 metres per second. After the fourth second, it'll be... The acceleration doesn't increase. Constant force will produce a constant acceleration, okay? Which will create a changing velocity. Does it make sense? Yep. So how does it, how does it work again? So you're saying that there's no force acting on this pen? No unbalanced force. There's an uh, upwards force. Oh, that way? Yeah, Sorry. Like this way. So if I, I'm just moving this along, I'm, my hand is applying a force. And that, if I'm, like, not if I'm doing this, but if, I, if I'm just slowly. Okay, right. Let's be careful here. You're dealing on a desk with um, rough particles and there's friction involved. Yeah. But if I had a, this on ice or an ice park, and I was just keeping my finger against it and moving it, it would just be, um, once I started off, my finger would just be co-moving with it because there'd be no uh, force. So at the start, there was a force. There was a force at the start, started moving when you accelerated it. But then once it gets up the speed of your finger, if you keep your finger at the constant speed, they'll just be co-moving. So the only reason that this doesn't keep moving along like that is because there's, there's friction. friction pushing against the, that. So, uh, right. so, so Force equals mass times acceleration. If I had a 10 newton force yeah. acting on a one kilogram mass, it will produce an acceleration. And then how's the change of how's the change in velocity 10? Well, Cause you, cause you no, no, no. Time. The change of velocity isn't 10. The change of velocity is 10 meters per second every second. So because acceleration is 10 newtons divided by one kilogram to find the acceleration, that's 10 meters per second change in velocity oh, per second. Oh, okay. So it starts at zero. A second later, because it's accelerating that rate, it will be up to 10 kilometers, 10 meters per second, oh, not yeah, kilometers. I thought you were actually solving for, like, you're no, solving no. A, I thought you were actually trying to find mm. A, because A is velocity of time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just saying every second will increase by 10 meters per second. That's what acceleration means. Yeah. Now, I'm going to just ignore that one for the minute. We'll come back to that. This impulse thing. 
FT, force times time equals mass times acceleration. Uh, sorry, mass times velocity. You've done that. Velocity equals displacement of time. Okay, let's have a look at this thing. I can prove it, it works for you with a bit of mathematics and stuff, but this is the concept I want to get across to you. Okay. If I have a one kilogram mass, let's make it one kilogram because it's simple. Let's take a one Newton force. Okay. So I've got a constant force of one Newton. I've got a constant mass of one kilogram. Hang on. And I'm starting the object with its initial velocity of zero. Right? Now, let's go back to this force formula. I've got one Newton of force. I've got one kilogram object. What acceleration is it going to have? Uh, one. one what? One metre per second. So it changes velocity one metre per second every second. Okay. So when my time is zero, the velocity is zero. When my time is one second, so that's one times one equals one times one. It'll be so one metre per second. Is it when your time is zero, what if it was velocity? Is it hmm. A over T? So you, oh, D over T, so that's one over zero. Yeah, don't worry about that part of it. I start at zero. I'm using my impulse formula. Okay, now, when I get to two seconds, let's work this out without using impulse, and I'll show it works. If I apply a force of one newton on a one kilogram object, it makes a one metre per second change in its motion every second. So after one second, it'll gain one metre per second, which means it's now travelling at... No, after one second. Travelling at one, so it'll be one. When I go to two seconds, I gain another metre per second. So it's now travelling two metres per second after two seconds. That side becomes a two. So two times one equals one times two. After three seconds, applying the same force, it's got constant acceleration, hasn't it? Hasn't changed. So it's only gained another metre per second. It's now up to three metres per second. So if I put that in my formula, that force applied for three seconds will produce a velocity of three metres per second. If it was five kilos, that would be one fifth as much, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. So twenty so kilos. Twenty would make that one twentieth as much. What this says, if you apply force at a constant, a constant force to a mass, some object, the longer you push it for, the more the change of velocity would be because it would accelerate for longer time. Yes. Everyone got that? Yeah. yeah. Good. So, 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 so in simple terms, while well, I was demonstrating on Friday, yeah, we got you on the video, yes. uh, on audio. In simple terms, what this will say is that if I wanted to work out the impulse on this, if I lifted it up so it fell for one second, right, and I know how much it weighs, I can work out, sorry, it's mass, not how much it weighs, I can work out the force acting on it. So I know that that force is acting for one second. And I, so that means I know that, I know that, I know that, and I can measure that. And that would verify that formula. And then what I can do is I can do it for two seconds. Take it up so it would fall for two seconds. And then what I would find out that that velocity would be greater after two seconds, no, because it starts at zero. So if I did a one second fall, I might, I'd expect it to be falling at about 10 metres per second when it hit the desk. So right? When I go to two seconds, I expect it to be about 20 metres per second when it hits the desk because it's accelerated at 10 metres per second for two seconds. 9.8. So, so if, if you drop a ball and you have two light gates, so you're measuring the time, but do it's you going to, you, how do you get the velocity? From okay, what you do is... You want your velocity near the base. So if that was a metre, you'd set your light gates 10 centimetres at the bottom. So you'd measure um, a small interval and it would remove a lot of the error. So you don't need, you know, it doesn't matter where you're measuring the time from, as long as it's a force that's acting on there and there's a time that's being measured. 
Yeah, because you know what you're looking for with the light gates is you're trying to work out the velocity. But what you're doing for this side of the equation is you're working out how long the things... So you work out how the droplets are falls for a second and then you measure the velocity at the bottom bit and that should be close to 9.8. Right, so with impulse, do you even need the right side of the equation if you've got the force? Because force times time equals impulse and what we're trying to find is... The yeah, but what you're trying to show is that that bit there does equal that bit there. So, so you, you impulse, need to know those two. So impulse is a change in momentum? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Spot on, 100%. Uh, he just got the next step up, which is to take that word in there and say impulse is a change of momentum. Yes. Yeah, so which we haven't talked about momentum yet, so I didn't want to bring it in. So let's just say that I've got my pen and I've got two, I've got a light gate here and a light gate here. Yeah. And then, so I drop it through the first one and that measures the time, and through the second one. And the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters a second. What am I, Ooh. what am I trying, what am I actually okay. trying to find? Okay. Let's go carefully. You, you, if you know, that yeah. that distance takes one second to fall. And you know that the force is equal to mass times acceleration. And you can measure the, the pen mass. And you can assume, because we've done lots of measurements on it, that the acceleration is 9.8 metres per second every second. And I've changed my language there to try to make that clear. So you can work out the force. So now you know what Ft is on this side of the equation, right? On the other side of the equation... If you measure that little bit there, that will give you approximately V. You also know the mass, M. So what you can show is that and that equal each other. Okay, so the, uh, the light gates will give you the velocity, right? Pretty close okay. to it. And, and yeah, velocity is just a, Riley. If you had something like a ramp, how would you uh, work out the force? Um, there's a complex formula you use. 